She saw how enthusiastic I was, and so uh, you know, I, I, I went and I talked to the guys and they uh, that had the junkyard, and I asked them where did this come from because I always want to know about the history of it. And so uh, it turned out that uh, it was on an aircraft carrier as a, uh, a radar to see if there was any enemy fighters coming in or if they could see if it was a foggy day or something they could see their own fighters coming in, and so. I just went out there and and bought it, and I had a radar dish already, and it fit perfect because it was exactly the perfect proportion. And uh, and then the rest was history. I just I put it up, and I made these little hexagon stainless steel pieces for it. And you know, you you look at yourself inside there, you see yourself a thousand times. <laughs> this this new this new rig that I'm I'm going to be making is so badass because the bearing is you could take your pinky and make it turn mm. and then as a pivot point so all you need is two t- a pivot and then a, a turn and that's all you need yep and and so uh that's and that's going to be uh like a cylinder that's sticking up like a short cylinder and then that will be a pivot and turn and then you you lock it down with a um uh some type of a tightening system that makes it stay but uh it's uh and then I'm a, that shiny aluminum i'm gonna definitely have to have some of that somehow yeah because that i want to test that out because that's a that's a game changer yeah we're going to take a trip to the observatory that have the biggest radio dishes in the world yeah and i and, and some of the parts are there too for making the most epic radar cookers sure cast iron to cook with Yep. Because this is so powerful. Oh yeah. That uh, and this is polished stainless steel here. Yep. And and there's a lot of different things you could do. I tried cooking with moonlight, but it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but long story short is, uh, it's uh, a fascinating uh, deal. I wish I had a, a laser cutter rather than a plasma cutter to cut this because uh, you could see that. Uh, if I did every one of these, I wouldn't have to make custom pieces here. You could see yep. it, customize it, but. It's all good. Yeah. It works. So you got more than enough. This is what, about two meters across? Six feet. Okay, yeah. so just just shy. And then this one over here is, is, oh. a, uh, is a, a sunflower. Mm-hmm. And what I'll probably do, uh, let's see, it, 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 it takes a little while to get this thing un, unfolded. Mm-hmm. And if the wind picks up, I got to put it back. Right. So just know that it gets out. Sure. Pretty big. Oh, it's, I can see that. Yeah. And 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 each one of these petals, I, I bend it by hand to try to dial in the sun a little bit. But this is all stainless. I make things last at least twenty thousand years. Yes. That's how long stainless lasts. Uh, anyway, the, the, this you know you know what biomimicry is, right? Yeah. The, the, this is a sunflower, and and flowers when it gets really breezy, they close up. Yeah. And now out here, this is called a lancia, which means wind. Oh. So very windy place. Sure. So that's why I had to close it up. Yep. Otherwise, uh, I, mean, I used to have this in Ohio, California, yeah. where I used to live. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I'd be. Anyways, those, those are my only solar cookers. I, I actually had, I can show you this over here. Mm hmm. Uh, hot dogs huh it was it was a uh, a curve like this that came out like that and then it had a, a, a tube that you could put the hot dog in oh sure and sure. then you, you, you know do the buns over here and then inside here is a oven and then everything I do I, I make biochar oh yeah so biochar I take it and then I put it in the compost and it, 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 it energizes the biochar sure but long story short is, uh, I've been doing rocket stoves and 
there's that one here, this is called King Beaver. It doesn't have a solar component, but because it's so clean, I mean, there's no smoke that comes out of it, and it's self-cleaning, and it does also make biochar. Since yep. we have a little bit of light, let me show sure. you my, my dragon. Even though this is not solar. So what I used to do a junkyard tour in the San Fernando Valley, which is the biggest waste stream in the, in the United States. Oh, imagine. And so I, I was able to find all kinds of great stuff. Here's another block of stroke here, using that shiny metal. And it's kind of like a solar cooker, but it's like a space heater. Sure. Uh, this gets red hot. This is a hydrogen rocket tank right yep. here. And then I have quartz glass that goes on that when, when that time comes. But it's so vulnerable uh, fire around here. Yeah. But this is a calla lily. And it actually is made for more heating outside. And then here is Sparky. Oh, there it is. This is my uh, dragon. My yep. cat is, is, is like the escort here. Sure. <laughs> and here's a pressure chest. Donations going here. By the way, because we have to pay taxes, it's ten dollars a night for me. That's so, fine. Does that work for you? Yes, it's totally fine. We'll, we'll we'll double it so you'll get a little donation too. Right. So this, yeah. this is um, Sparky. Uh, these are old cast iron. Oh uh, sure. Things that I found. And, uh, what makes it unique is um, uh, it. There's a, a stainless steel dome inside. And then the fire goes around it, so it heats it equally. Oh wow! And then, and then sure. by the time it gets to the top, it uh, comes out the head. Look at that jet way up there. Oh my goodness! You probably don't get too much of that out here. We don't get that out here. Yeah. It could be who knows what. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Fourth of July, I'm going down to the 395. We're having a little festival. Oh sure. At the sculpture garden. And I might bring a solar cooker too. Why not? Uh, yeah. Not the big one, it's too much. To yeah. Deal with. yeah. So check this out over here since we're doing a tour. Sure. Uh, this is a fireproof model of a cob house. Oh, and, yeah. And all those radar dishes I'm going to go get are going to be the roof. With, oh, with, man. With white pumice rock on top of it, which is an insulator. It also doesn't blow off. Sure. And that, that tube over there, this is a seep that we have. This is. Uh, four gallons a minute of water that we get from a, a spring. I was going to ask you about that. And, yeah. and the Native Americans lived here for thousands of years. You'd find little uh, arrowheads every once in a while. Or sure. Obsidian. We had a, a mall that had these giant Christmas ornaments as a decoration. <laughs> and this was in a junkyard. This was a prototype. But it can't be a solar cooker. It's too deep of a dish. Yeah. As you know. That's in it's it's uh, being a ball rather than exactly. a, a bent parabola or whatever you want. Here's a uh, this is for grinding gravel in one of the quarries and uh, mines that they have. <laughs> but you'll see that there's radar dishes all over the property. Yes. Uh, there's one up there. <laughs> yep. Uh, that I might make a solar cooker out of. This is a little bit deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are redwood trees, and a friend of mine sent me 60 of them. Oh, cool. Half of them died, but I do have some planted around. Yeah. Here's a, here's a, here's a radar dish. Yeah. Uh, this is for my my cat. I, I'm going to put this up in the tree, because this is where they, they grew up. Oh, sure, and, sure. <laughs> so I use radar dishes for everything. Hey. So this is my shop. It's a little bit crowded. We're called jackrabbit. Here's a sculpture of a jackrabbit, <laughs> and this this particular wood glows in black light. Oh, really? Yes. Oh my goodness. It's honey locust. <laughs> exactly. And right right down this valley, they made these uh, uh, this railroad back in the 18, 1883, and they cut down all the big old growth redwood trees. Oh man. I know. <laughs> so I I get some past here, but here's where I do a lot of my work. I'm, I'm building. A saloon, and this is going to be the uh, the door that opens up, and there's a bar underneath it. Cool. You'll probably see that tomorrow. And this is old growth redwood. This yep. grain is so tight you can't even see it sometimes with the redwood. Oh man. And I have to, I have I'm doing this for the saloon and other projects. Sure. This was at a uh, that big camber door was at a quarry. 
Okay. And, they, and I go to these quarries and, and mines, and they give me all this stuff. They got to get rid of it. Well, yeah, yeah. And I could turn it into amazing shit. Sure. It's probably, a, what do they do? They got like a Superfund site or something? or? Well, no, they, they just don't know what to do with things, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Oh, man. These are some of the little radar dishes. Sure. Uh, this is the perfect radar dish uh, for cooking. Right oh, yeah, here. yeah. Because it's, it's, it doesn't have any dings in it. It's about the, it's a little bit bigger than that one, I think. Or mm -hmm. maybe the same size. It looks about a yeah. little bigger, maybe. And, and, and this, well, this one here could be used, but th this one's pretty neat looking. Yeah. I'm not afraid of much of yeah, don't, don't worry, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is another thing from the uh, quarry. And here's another radar dish. Oh, man. This, this is going to be used 4th of July for mm -hmm. a shade structure. And this fiberglass, I'll put it together and I'll put like probably four legs on it. Sure. Or maybe I could possibly figure out a way of making one pedestal that's going to be strong enough. Yep. Because the wind is going to take a total of what to do. Right? Yeah. So this is, is going to be a camp tent. And then I have the door for it. And it will have redwood on the inside so you don't hit the rusty side. Yeah. And, and then there'll be like nice soft sand underneath it and you just put your sleeping bag in there or whatever. Uh, yep. So that, that's a great line right there. Oh wow, sure. Anyway, we put Anyway, this is like a really rich soil. That's right where the trunk is, and that's, and that's why it's like oh, it's off. it's about as it's out of control. Yeah, it's in a good way. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make a, probably have some jackrabbit wine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so this is uh, super early. Yeah, because I, I haven't been on this sharp of an angle with this yet. Sure. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it'll so, take it from the horizon on. That's uh, totally. Yeah. And the way I dial it in is I don't have that middle one marked, okay. but I kind of know where it's at. Sure. And so instead of looking at the pot, you look at the reflection. Yes. Like if you look inside, check it out. See the yep. reflection yeah. of the pot inside? Yes. And you can see where it's it's getting its heat. Yep. Which is, in those little hexagon makes it really fascinating. Yep. I mean, it makes it you know, have a, a oh, science yeah. to it. I, uh, I actually saw a smaller solar cooker with one inch hexagon pieces at one point. Oh my, yeah. And it was it, it was the inspiration that made me do this. Now I usually put uh, cow manure in the coffee if that's okay with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long as they're, it's free range, right? It, it is free range. <laughs> <laughs> I got this up, uh, there's a waterfall up uh, over here on the other side of this hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a place where the they bring their cattle and it's fenced in and i was looking for a place to uh, get this because free range manure is the best yes and and so i i have to water it down and put it on on, on somewhere where it needs it and it needs it everywhere so i have sure. to see what's going to happen so what i do is i look to the cinder mine and i mean the uh, pumice mine over there and i see what the wind's doing Mm -hmm. You know, wind is a, a lot to do sometimes when you in a place called Olantia. Yes. So it looks like it's out of the north, and that should shift eventually. But it's such a fine dust. Yeah. That you could tell. So that's my indicator, because you know us solar people are weather people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you got to know what your weather's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm let, letting these green weeds grow. They're not really weeds; they're just native plants. Mm -hmm. And. I'll pick them and put them in my compost because sure. this is where all the microbes that come in, they land on here. And you always want to have green with your compost uh, instead of just having, you know, manure, sure. which has it also, but yeah. it's just fascinating. Well, these plants that look like tomato plants, are they tomato plants? No, they're not. What are they? You know, uh, I, had a, I had a name of those at one point. And uh, a lot of these are medicinal and, you know, and edible. You make tea out of oh, it. Oh, sure. But you yeah. got to be careful. Yep. Some of them aren't. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but there's so many varieties, it's hard to believe. Yep. So this dude here looks like it's in shadow. Yep. It's, uh, the sun's creeping over it, though.
See, this, this has to really be at a sharp angle. And then also, what happens when you're at a sharp angle, this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. And so you have to, I, can, I will bend these to make them, in fact, I have it so you could, there's a tab on the back here mm -hmm. that, uh, you can't stain the steel tap on the face. Be that much of an issue, but you know, this, this one here I, I don't use a lot. I use this for sauces, uh, sure. but anyway, it's more of a decorative thing. Mm -hmm. When I first made it, it, it was it was not the, like the most efficient, impressive design. Uh, it was more of an art piece. Yeah. But but this one, you, oh, you, yeah. just, you know that that one rocks the house. Oh yes. <laughs> Back, I'm gonna get the coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> So one, one of the um, cast iron pots I have is a big oval shape. You can see uh, on there there's an oval oh, yeah. piece. Yep. And that, that's my go-to piece like in, in uh, at dinner time where you could put stews in there, soups. Mm -hmm. uh, I've actually done uh, uh, all kinds of different meats. And uh, it, because of the cast iron, it stays hot. The sun will go down and I'll come back it'll be warm enough to serve like an hour later. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's, that's where people in the solar industry, I've never really seen cast iron. Yeah, people, the people that use it, they'll, they put it out first before mm -hmm. they put the food in. Right, yeah, get so they get the little heat sink and they'll even do it in uh, box cookers, mm -hmm. but the vast majority with like the box cookers, they do the thin walled. You know, e stuff. everything you say is based on solar cooking and it's all on point. Uh, sure. <laughs> it, it, because uh, how many years have you been into this? Well, I've been collecting since well '04. I mentioned my brother in okay. uh, Norfolk, and uh, uh, probably 2010, 2011 was mm -hmm. was when I realized, you know, I kind of reached the point of no return. I just right. I was committed and kept collecting. And that's about the time I started. I, in fact, yeah. the first solar cooker I made was for that uh, rocket stove. It was a made it a hybrid, which mm -hmm. you can find a hybrid rocket stove yes. solar cooker. It, that doesn't happen. Yeah, and so it, it only did like zucchinis and strips of food. It yep. did and hot dogs, sausage, yeah. but it worked really well. Yeah, and uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, I'd love to take some of that aluminum when I get it. Yeah, and 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 make make the uh, the better hybrid deal. Sure. Because like right now, like the the thing about hybrids, uh, if you go if you go both ways, you because you, you one burner is not enough. Right. You can't, I mean, it, like you have to, you're, you're limited. Mm -hmm. And having a double whammy, like, uh, is, is really important, I think. Yeah. So next time you come here, there, there's going to be definitely more solar stuff. Happening. Sure. I'll check on my chili. Breakfast chili. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> but you know what? Solar <laughs> cooker people, they'll eat, they'll swallow anything. <laughs> I'm not picky. I just want to get my get my calories in the morning. Right. <laughs> well, I see I see smoke. That's not good. It's warm. It takes so much to shade. Yep. This dude. Oh, that's going to be. You can see it. Oh, I got a little boil. That's good news. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not at full sun yet. I got sh shade still. So I got. <laughs> That, that's wow the moisture that these plants pull up I, I pulled this weed out and I feel the moisture on it all right so the top should be ready for you soon okay take walks with my cats. 
Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one will always want to take a walk, and then this one comes out. He's just coming. She's coming out now. Yep. So they're waiting for my walk. Okay. <laughs> and because they know that uh, I'm their protector. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have bobcats here. In fact, I was taking a walk along that area over there, and I woke up a bobcat, and he was like that far from me. Oh, man. And then another time a bobcat went into my shed over there. And then it jumped up on the window, <laughs> and it sat there looking in. It was a young one, sure. but it was so beautiful. Oh yeah. Um, to see these guys, you know, they're, they're, this is where they live. They've lived yep. here for a long ass time, and uh, anyway. yeah. So yeah, I, I think you know, I've been here exactly a year, mm -hmm. and. You know, uh, solar, you could design a space for it. And and I think that shade is something I never, I yes. didn't ever consider it, but it's super important. Yes. Because if you're in the sun, you got to cool off. Yeah. So so that that's something that, um, well, obvious, it's obvious I'm going to put a radar this year. <laughs> <laughs> I got all the ones, the biggest ones in the world. Mm -hmm. In fact, next year when you come here, You'll probably see some kind of a radar dish way up on the hill that's beaming a, a, a laser light of some sort <laughs> uh, that'll, uh, or maybe there'll be um, some kind of a mirrored thing where you can't tell what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. One of the things I did too, I got to show you. Um, I'm the only one in the world to make a piece of artwork that's a mirage, and. You know, when you're driving down the road, you see the mirage in the distance, mm -hmm. right? And th this is this is a scientific thing too. Uh, like you know, we're talking science. And anyway, <clears throat> it it was at a Burning Man, and I couldn't afford to make the whole thing, so I had nature make the rest of it for me. Anyway, it was it was half a mermaid, and, and nature made the other half of it, <laughs> and it was 75 feet long. It was um, it was such a success, and then the the art curator at Burning Man. People would go out to the mermaid, and they see only half of it, and they they would say, "Why is it only half done?" And I said, "Well, you have to go over there and look at it through the telescope." But no one no one's done anything since using that strategy. Yeah. And I what I did is, right next door to where I worked, at the airport hangar, there is a uh, a moving company. And they had these pieces of one inch plywood that were like so beat up and they didn't use them anymore. So I got the whole stack and that's what I made it out of. Cool. I got it all for free. Then I have um, community, a lot of community people that I, I hang out with. This is, uh, have you ever heard of City Repair? No. Oh my God. City Repair, this guy, Mark Lakeman, goes around the West Coast and they paint mandalas in the, in the street. And also they put cob ovens and solar cookers on the corners oh, where people nice. cook. Now, he, he is a destination for you uh, next tour sure. because he, he's as eco as it gets and also he's as fun as it gets. And he's an architect. And we're like best buddies. And uh, anyway. So th this was a rotating house that I built. This is this is the lazy Susan for it. Uh, I never made it here, yep. but it was it was it had half glass doors, sure. and then solid doors, and you rotate it with the sun. Okay. What kind of heat you want? Sure. Badass. Yeah. Sounds like a solar cooker guy <laughs> to me. Yeah. <laughs> but I I want to do that uh, with. I'm building a 30 foot dome over here, mm -hmm. out of all these cow um, railings that you saw sure. coming in. If you saw, and uh, you know, I have triangular pieces that'll you know go together really fast, and I want to make a track where the dome has a shaded area, and then it also has a, uh, a you know a greenhouse glass, sure. which would be polycarbonate double pane, and in that way you dial the temperature that the plants like, because you know you can't have direct sun on, on sensitive plants, sure. and and then you, but it needs enough sun to, to live. And, and so that's something, and also there'll be two domes. One will be a fish pond, 
with ducks and fish in it, and the water, because it's all downhill, will percolate into the garden. Mm -hmm. So you never have to water it. Yeah. How badass is that? Oh, yeah. And, and that way, uh, you're, you're, uh, it's like an automatic system. Sure. The only thing you have to do is turn the, the dome, which will be on you know, rollers, and you could probably do that with a winch or, or a tractor or maybe by hand, who knows. But this world I live in here is uh, all about experimenting, you know. I worry about solar cooking, right? Yes. Wouldn't it be nice to have just things you love to focus on? Yeah. That that is a life to me. You know. You know. You know the other thing about this area. If you look around very slowly, you see that there's ants around here. Uh, I heard there's a hundred seeds per square inch in the desert. I believe it. And. You know, during the spring, we had so many flowers here. It was, it was like it was like a paradise. Oh, yeah, I remember the news programs would say, "Look at this," because it's mm -hmm. it's it's pretty rare, right? It's not like every year, even, right? Yeah, we had 15 inches of snow, which helped that yeah. cause. Yeah. And uh, where are these plants getting the moisture from? Of course, I have the gray water shower coming water yeah. coming down here. Yeah. I want to make an herb garden around here. Imagine throwing rosemary in the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, let's see, set this on the, like my uh, cow pie tripod. Getting in it. See, this is where I, I know <laughs> you're the real deal, there's no doubt. Uh, so, this is Luther. Uh, setting up his cow patty uh, <laughs> tripod, and anyway, this this shows me that he is the real deal. I mean, when when someone uh, knows the uh, effect of like if th this was in a city, we'd be arrested for having this much poop <laughs> per square inch in in an area. But anyway, we're doing an interview here. It's just fascinating. But anyway, this is also my coffee table when I have to put my coffee down. And I'm not worried a bit because I know that this is healthier than most of the uh, uh, cosmetics crap that people put on their face. <laughs> oh, look who it is. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, maybe, maybe this could be a lost soul. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, th no, this could be another person that they wanted to visit. That's it. Because we have all kinds of coming in. I don't know who this is. Maybe this is the person that's in the rocket chair. Could this be the chair? Okay, well. So, let's talk about beavers. Well, uh, <laughs> number one, uh, most people think that beavers uh, are actually kill trees. And uh, right now, we live in an area that there were probably beavers centuries ago. And uh, what, what the beaver does the best is slow, sink, and spread water. They make a dam, and the reason they make a dam is because they are so afraid of predators killing them that they have to have a place they can swim really deep. Yep. And so they make these deep ponds. In fact, we were up in the Sierras in the Kern Canyon taking a hike one day. And we saw a beaver dam. We called it Beaver Central. And we looked down into the water and it went down at least 30 to 40 feet deep. Wow. Oh. And it was so clear, the water, and and so at that point I was I was walking across the dam that the beavers made with with a with a grasshopper on the end of my my fishing line. Sure. And as I was trying to straggle across that beaver dam, a trout jumped up out of the water before I even had a chance to cast it out, and it and it got my bait, and I had a big old trout. Oh my goodness. Now, it wasn't that the beaver at that point meant that much to me. But it wasn't until uh, I went to a cop class, which I have mentioned before, and there was a lady that worked for Fish and Game, and she said that uh, uh, they're, they're trying to figure out how to get the salmon to come back up the Klamath River and, and some of the other rivers. And they spent millions of dollars making fish ladders and, and doing everything they could. And then the last resort, they introduced a beaver and it changed the game 
and after a flood or a big rain event, the water would go over the dam and the beaver would be trying to fix it while the salmon were jumping over the dam, getting yeah. upstream and spawning. Bang, bang. If that doesn't work, nature has it down. Man does not have it down. Man needs to get a life. Uh, it, he really does. I mean, we have a sun that is shining down on us that has so much energy that we could do things with and people don't even know about it. And so if people knew about what the beaver could also do, uh, because of the drought and because of global warming, we're having uh, less rain and there's a lot more evaporation. But guess what? The beavers, because they're spreading the water, they actually stop forest fires from happening because if there's a green area where a beaver lives, for maybe even a mile of green a green belt that fire cannot pass over if it's a mature yeah. and and that's that's maybe two or three things I talked about with the beaver now back in the day there was a, a swan it was called the trumpeter swan and it used to live only on beaver lodges and the reason it did because it was predators could not get the babies and the eggs because they couldn't swim to, to, get, to get these uh, guys or if they did there yeah. plenty of time for them to yes yeah and so that that swan is extinct now except in Canada yeah and so if you see a trumpeter swan flying in the air we're looking at something that's going to help green this desert and green California and green the west coast and green America and green the world and they're introducing them in England right now I just did it took a survey on, on what to do with the beaver and uh, and they get it Europeans get what needs to happen. Yeah. Americans are so locked into beavers kill trees and they're a nuisance and property owners. Uh, there's a video, uh, it's called Leave It to Beavers on YouTube and they put a beaver in the desert and the beaver made a dam out of grass and, 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 uh, and cattails and it started greening the desert because it's because it, after a big rain it would slow and sink the, and all the seeds would collect, all the lizards poop, the birds poop would collect, stop, and start fertilizing the entire desert. I mean, it's just this ecosystem that is second to nothing that man can do, nothing. And so it's really important to have a beaver come back into your watershed. And if you don't do it, you're a loser. You, you've lost the opportunity because it's, it, we're, we're like on, on an uphill swim right now. We need to get the beaver in there as fast as we can. Yeah. So. You're going to try to do that here. You've got a well, stream? Or a... Well, yes, I do. In fact, we were doing some research on this waterfall over mm -hmm. here, and there's two forks to the waterfall. There's one up where I got that poop, and and you have to have it like on only you know, like a four-degree grade. You can't have it too steep. They can't make a dam. They, they actually have it in their DNA. Oh, they're, they're, they're uh, so down. Yeah. And so there is one spot that they could do it. Now, the opportunity would be to have it as the water starts to evaporate, and goes underground, uh, but I actually think it'd be too too risky to have one over there, or a, a family. You wouldn't have a family, so they have kits. Yeah. But uh, I think that there's other areas that you could probably do it. And there's a, a lake right over there. You could see it's a reservoir, yep. and that's a possibility because that's not going to affect anything. But of course, you know, LA water. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? Right. Uh, but getting back to uh, the beaver. Uh, they, may, they, they hunted them to almost extinction because of their pelts and their fur, and they made hats out of them. Uh, but they, they are also, uh, when you get a baby beaver, they're the coolest little guys to take care of. I've seen videos of it. I haven't ever seen a beaver physically ever in my life. I've right. only seen their lodges and their dams. But if I saw them down there, I, was I, I started cutting willow from our trees and I was in, I was throwing them in the aqueduct hoping the beaver had something to eat, which is probably a big no-no. <laughs> <laughs> probably would have been caught if, if someone saw me do it. It gets all the way to LA. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but willow is aspirin. The bark of willow is aspirin. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons they like it so much. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, uh, instead of taking aspirin, I eat willow bark. Uh, Isn't that funny? Well, sure. There's so many things that we don't know. Yeah. Uh, but it all goes back to solar cooking. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's, yeah. There's so much knowledge to be learned from simple things, you know, and, and people are just don't know. And it's about education. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't get educated, you're, you're going to have trouble in life. You have to be resourceful. 
and and keep moving and uh, and not feel bad about yourself. Your biggest weight is your head yeah. and what you think about yourself. Yeah. And uh, being educated and being out there and, and also doing a junkyard tour. I do that there too. And I learn about all things, how they're built and, yeah. and how they're put together, how the materials and uh, this new uh, material for these solar cookers is going to be epic. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, I think that... Uh, I got to make a another solar cooker or two. I'm going to be going to the largest radar installation in in the United States, and they're going to give me giant radar dishes, which is going to be as yes. big as it gets. Yeah. And and it's going to be like the candy store is now open, you know. <laughs> so I'm like stoked. Yeah. And I I have the the bigger the truck and trailer, the bigger the radar dish I could bring back. There we go. <laughs> But anyway, it's it's all a lot of fun, and but you know I don't look at it as hard work. I look at it as hard play, yeah. and hard play is way better than hard work. Hard work is something you don't like, and so that's that's yeah. the key. Find out what you love and just keep going. Yeah. And it's unfortunate we have to get older. This is true. I mean, <laughs> it'd be nice to to have. Well, you know, I do have some young people who are who who got it down. Yeah. But we got to get those young people. Uh, on the same mindset and then find their path yeah you know but yeah. have a passion for something that you love that's that's it yeah well great thank you so much hey you know what this has been a, a pleasant surprise i saw a car <laughs> drive up last night and i had no idea what we'd be getting i saw one drive up this morning oh. i had no idea what we we're gonna be oh, getting we, we, you know we spent like two hours with him and <laughs> yeah totally and he's and he's he's taking the time off from finding his prize steer right was, uh, but just generous right you know, a generous neighbor and totally and knowing the value of networking yeah <laughs> and he pulls out his iphone which was pretty yeah, funny yes. for a cowboy that, that was hilarious <laughs> i haven't seen when you mentioned the the cowboy with the laptop on the horse yeah right i haven't seen that one yet no, is that got like a exactly. cartoon or a photo or <laughs> right i'll google it when i get home and then to know that there's a bomb area over yeah. there on the other side of that hill yeah uh, that mountain yeah uh, not that i'm going to go there but <laughs> yeah well, now recognizing this, that that sound did it did sound like a like a bomb in a yeah, bombing totally. range rather than. Well, you know, uh, one day I'm going to find out wh when they're when they have a schedule because it would be very interesting to see the wildlife over there. Oh yeah. Because yeah. if you're not allowed there, because I've been to areas yeah. that you're not allowed to be in, uh, up in uh, the Crystal River, or the Crystal Reservoir in the Bay Area. Sure. It's a place where it's a it's a reservoir that no admittance, but they have like incredible fish in there sure. you're not allowed to fish in there yeah. but i i looked over the fence and it was just pristine yeah and 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 that's because man never touched it yep. man did not take and that's the difference you have to give more than you have to take and you know the lord doesn't provide everything uh you have to find out what that is uh and and and, and give back and know know the patterns of nature that's the key yeah. thing and one of the patterns, obviously, is the sun. Yes. And and knowing what the sun's going to do, and that's a pattern. And the more patterns you learn in nature, the wealthier you will be. Yes. yes. Period. End of story. Okay. Right on. <laughs> important to prove the point about the sun. 